Praise the Lord. Let's uh, let's go to him in prayer right now. Our Father, which art in heaven, thank you for this day, dear God. Uh, thank you how you have watched over us, protected us, and blessed us to be here. And we come, dear God, with great interest, interest in your word, Father. And we know that you have a word for us as we study together the book of Genesis. Uh, thank you for each one of our families. And Lord, as we go through the study, I pray that we will grow stronger, not only individually, but our families as well. Uh, thank you for uh, just being God. We love you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Hey, let's, we, we've got a new unit of study. Uh, we're going to be looking at, at uh, family responsibility, right? Navigating family conflict actually is the is the theme for the uh, next six weeks and uh, we'll begin with our lesson today that's found in genesis 4 cain and abel speaking of a conflict <laughs> a major conflict uh, there that we'll learn about uh, and then we'll talk about abram and lot Isaac and Rebecca, Jacob and Esau, another big few, Joseph and his brothers, oh boy, <laughs> changed the world, didn't it, that one, and, and then, and, and as a matter of fact, Joseph and his brothers, back to back, back to back lessons, uh, dealing with jealousy and then dealing with reconciliation in our last lesson uh, in the, on November the 17th. There's all kind of conflict with families today, isn't there? Amen. It's sad to say that, but you are probably, well, a, a lot of our crime uh, is family against family. <laughs> when, when, when you listen to the news daily, it's, 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 it's unreal. It's, uh, gang warfare is bad, but Men beating their wives, wives beating their husbands, <laughs> beating their children. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. Right, yeah, yes. Yes, it is. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Lord have mercy. Yeah. So this is a uh, excellent time for us to uh, study this. Amen. Uh, so we are, we're going to be looking at the fourth chapter of Genesis, but before we talk about the fourth, let's talk about the third chapter of, of Genesis. Because in that third chapter, that's where sin got started, didn't it? So it started with the, uh, the mother and the father. It started with Adam and Eve. But while sin got started there, another amazing thing about the third chapter of Genesis is the gospel started in Genesis. I was talking to one of my grandchildren this week and, and uh, asked me about studying the Bible. And I, I said, uh, and, and I, I recommended starting with the book of John, but I said, all of it is good. I, I, and, and I started talking about Genesis, not because it was our study this week, but it, uh, I said, there's a lot of things that we can learn about ourselves. <laughs> in the book of Genesis. Uh, and we'll learn that from when we compare these two brothers today, Cain and Abel. And they were, uh, they were similar uh, in ways. And how were they similar? How was, how was Cain and Abel similar? And, and don't make it real hard. Some things are real obvious. <laughs> how were they similar? Uh huh. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. 
Right. Yeah, yeah. All right. So they both had an occupation. But they were different occupations, right? But but the fact is, they both had an occupation. What else was uh, were they similar in? Like I said, don't overlook the obvious. Their mom and daddy, amen. Their mom and daddy, they had the same mother and father. Just because you have the same mother and father, though, don't mean that you're the same. You you can be different, uh, even though you have the same mother and father. And I heard Verilyn say. What'd you say again? They both worship. Who they worship? They worship God. Yeah, yeah. They they both worship God, and uh, obviously they had uh, been before God, had access uh, to God, uh, and spent time before Him. Not only in our text today, but obviously uh, before then. Uh, and the, the book of Genesis is Genesis means what? What does Genesis mean? Say it, say it again. Beginning. Right, beginning. yeah, it's the beginning. And the book of Genesis is the book of many beginnings. I know we, we always think about the creation of the earth, but in our text today, let's just look at this fourth chapter. What are some of the firsts that took place in this in this fourth chapter? She wouldn't have. She had Cain, first baby ever born. Right? Yeah, yeah, first baby ever born was was, was Cain. What else? What, what was another first? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, and, and let's let's put it that way. It's the first family. Yeah. It was not only the mother and the father, but they also had children. So they had a family. It's, it's the first family that was on uh, the earth. Uh, uh, she obviously had to get pregnant. <laughs> so the, the first time that that a woman was pregnant uh, on on the earth. And, and what happened in this fourth chapter? What was the big thing that happened in this chapter? Death. Yeah, yeah. But but what kind of death? Yeah, yeah. So this is the first, it, yeah, and it was first degree murder. It was the first murder recorded in the world was Cain and Abel. And families, how, how many of you, let me ask you a question. How many of you are from a dysfunctional family? All of us should have raised our hand. Amen. All of us are dysfunctional. Amen. We need some help, y'all. <laughs> Why? Because there's sin in this in this world, and uh, it's going to create dysfunction. And we see it in our scripture today. So let's let's dive into it. Let's look at uh, Genesis four. If you would, Maury, read verses 1 through 12, and then we'll get into our discussion. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have forgotten the man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother, Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the first weeks of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his contentment fell. 
after this. Mm-hmm. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou why art thou rock? And why is thy confidence fallen? If thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? If thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And until thee shall be his desire. Thou shalt rule over it. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother. Hmm. And it came to pass. They were in the field. And Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel, thy brother? He said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood cried unto me from the ground. Mm -hmm. And now art thou cursed from the earth, which had opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength, a fugitive and a bad about shall thou be in the group. Right. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Look at how politely, that's the word that I'm going to choose, that this, the, the first verse in, in uh, our text today begins. And, and what does it say? And Adam knew Eve and his wife. Now, we all know what the Bible means by knew, right? I I want to emphasize this because it's a good time to do this. Uh, we always talk about it. Uh, we, we, we talk about what God's plan is as it relates to marriage. It's between a man and a woman. Okay. All right. And the Bible describes her as his wife. The Bible is not anti-sex. Y'all, you can say amen. It is, it is not anti-sex. In fact, it's God's creation. There's nothing to say. I mean, I mean, it, it's it's very likely that that yes, they 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 uh, were involved in a sexual relationship with one another, but they are husband and wife. They're one. They're they're one. Uh, and and what it what it does is it helps the relationship to grow, saints. It 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 helps. Uh, it is it, God's plan that it would be a man and a woman, and uh, that sexual relationship that they have. And it's good to talk about these things in the Bible. It, you know, with our young man that's here, hey amen. I mean, uh, talking about the facts of life and not just the facts of life, the importance of marriage, hey amen. Uh, because that, that was God's plan uh, to, to have uh, uh, a father and a mother in the family. Now, we know that that doesn't always work out that way today. Uh, but what it does. If you do it God's way, it enhances the relationship. If you don't do it God's way, that's trouble. Amen. Why? You're living in sin. You cannot live in sin and please God. Amen. I don't care what you do. I can stand up here and teach you all day long. If I got another woman on the side, <laughs> that is not, that, that's not going to please God. Uh, 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 and, and, and what God wants me and my beloved to do is grow stronger and stronger in our 
relationship and we ought to do it his way. So, you know, husband and wife, and they knew it. Uh, uh, Adam knew his wife and she conceived. Um, I, there's a, uh, y'all probably heard this joke before. Let me take a stab at it. It was about this little girl. Have y'all heard that joke? And, and her, she was talking to her mama and she wanted to know how human life began on this earth. And she said, and she, and she said that Adam and Eve, uh, and you know, they had relations and, and they had children, they had Cain and Abel uh, to begin with. Uh, and uh, that's how it started. And the little girl asked her daddy the same question. And the, the daddy, the way he answered it, he said that, uh, well, you know, it started with, with apes, with monkeys. And, and uh, that's how, and, and then those, those monkeys became human beings. That's how uh, uh, that's how it got started on the earth. Well, the little girl was confused, went back to her mama and said, Mama, Daddy said, and, and, and can you explain this to me, that it, it came, we came from apes. And, and you said we came from Adam and Eve. And, and, and she said to the little girl, well, let's easily explain. I was only describing to you my side of the family. He was describing to you his side of the family. <laughs> now, with that, with that said, you know, that, there's something that's amazing about this that, that they even studied in. It, it, was, it, was, it was a study that was done in California. I think it was UC Berkeley. What they did is they took, they tested the DNA of 147 different people, 147 47 different people from five different countries, so different continents and what have you. Now, DNA, the way it is, uh, you've got chromosomes, right? 23 of them are your mother's chromosomes. Guess who the other 23 are? Come on now, y'all, yeah. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That's why when when that test is run, they say, hey, <laughs> yeah. And you want to know if it's your child or not, uh, it, it, it'll show up. But here, here, here's what's amazing about that test that they ran with those 147 different people. Every one of them had the same chromosomes on the mother's side. Y'all didn't hear me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, it, it was done in the 1980s. You look it up for yourself. In fact, they they uh, they 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 started calling that mitochondria is, is what it was on that that side, uh, mitochondria Eve. And check this out. They believe, uh, and and there are different beliefs about it, but but they they believe that uh, it was in the area of Africa or Asia. Woo! Now I said something, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you suppose that on the that every everything that everybody had the same, regardless as to their race, where they were? I'm just suggesting. You know, I, I'm, I'm no scientist. Maybe it's because we came <laughs> because we all came from Eve. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, may, maybe so. So uh, they, uh, she conceived and she bare Cain. She bare Cain. Does anybody know what Cain's name means? That she acquired, she acquired. Uh, it was it was given, it was given to her by by God. I want to remind you of something going back to that third chapter. Remember what God said to the serpent. What was going to happen? 
What about crushed? But before crushed, he talked about seed, right? And where did the seed come from? Right, yeah. The seed of the woman. And 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 he was go you were gonna bruise his heel, but he was gonna crush your head. Amen. He's gonna destroy you. That's the gospel. Saints, that is foretelling of Jesus, the Messiah to come, Genesis 3 and 15. Amen. It it, it started there. It, 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 it's and and don't you imagine that Eve is thinking, wow, God has given, this is the one. This is the one that I'm, that we're looking for, that the, that the Messiah is going to come to. But she didn't give birth to a Messiah. She gave birth to a what? Start with a M. <laughs> yeah, she gave birth to a murderer. Yeah, 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 yeah. It wasn't, uh, it, 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 didn't, it didn't pan out like, like she thought it would. Because it says, I have gotten a man from the Lord. The Lord did this. She 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 acknowledged that. Okay. God and and, and so I I think it's it's fair to say that it's it's possible that she's looking at the, uh, that this is what God promised. Uh, when when uh, when he cursed that serpent and, and that this was the answer to that. And of course we know that it didn't happen that way. And uh, she also gave birth to his brother, Abel. And both of them had an occupation that we've already talked about, right? Uh, what was Cain's occupation? Amen. He's a farmer. He was a tiller of the soil. Who else had that occupation? <laughs> Think about it. What did God say to Adam? Did daddy have the same occupation? Because God told him to, to till the soil. And, 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 it, and so both of them had a job. It is false teaching when somebody says that it's work is a curse. That's not true. Before the fall, God wanted man to work. Amen. Yeah, that, that's why a woman should never be interested in a man that don't want to work. Amen. Amen. Something wrong with that. Amen. That, that, that's not godly, for sure. And, 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 and that's not God's intent for a man. It, we ought to want to work. And I'm talking about if we're physically able to do that. Don't, don't misunderstand me. Uh, but but they, they both had a a job and he's he's just a chip off the old block. Can't you imagine Adam was awfully proud <laughs> of Cain and, and and Cain and, and what he was what he was doing and because he was following in his uh footsteps. Uh, and but yet it was also necessary to to take care of the animals too, was it? So what what kind of occupation would you say that how would you describe the occupation of Abel? Shepherd, yeah, I, I, shepherd is good. Uh, if, if, if Brother Prince, he say he's, he's a rancher, <laughs> and I'd have to say amen to that because he probably had more than just sheep. He probably had goats, right? Uh, uh, cattle of, of, of some sort, and so uh, that's that's uh, verses one and two, and uh, something happened over time. Now, the Bible doesn't say how often this happened. It just talks about this particular instance. I think it's fair to say that this was described in verse three was not the first time that this happened. And what happened in verse three? Yeah. Yeah, they brought an offering is what the Bible says, describes it as an offering to the Lord. Uh, and Abel brings his offering. What kind of offering was it? <clears throat> Verse four. Abel. 
Right. Now underline the word firstlings. Woo, don't miss that, y'all. Please don't miss it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Firstlings. Because we're going to come back to that of his flock. Not only did he give that, he gave what else? Woo, you know, I know what I I know why I like fat. <laughs> it, man, it does taste good, don't it? And, and, and I, I'm reading in Leviticus right now in my daily Bible readings and in and, and, and chapters three and chapter seven, and it's talking about bringing the fat before the, and, and only, only to be brought before the Lord, all right? Because it was a sweet smelling savor, amen. Have you ever come in the house and somebody cooking some meat? You know what you're smelling? <laughs> You smelling that fat, well, Amen. And and so he, he gave he gave extra, Amen. Yeah, he. In other words, he gave his. It starts with a B. Amen. Amen. He gave his best to 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 the Lord. Amen. Uh, as an offering, and and how did God see it? How does the word describe it? He had respect for it. Amen. Now let's look at let's look at Cain in verse five. What kind of offering did he bring? He brought it was from the ground. Man, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, now use your sanctified imagination. The Bible doesn't say this, but but I how do you imagine that sacrifice looked? <laughs> oh yeah it, it was beautiful don't, don't you imagine? no i believe it was beautiful it was, i mean he, he walked up there he was proud boy <laughs> with the offer that he was gonna bring to the lord and how good it looked he just knew in his head that god's gonna be pleased with my offering and lo and behold what happened yeah, uh, he had no respect for his offer. Now, there's been speculation as to why. In fact, I, let me tell you about uh, something that I have taught in the past, and I certainly want to correct, and I, I because I don't think it's accurate. And I've heard others, you know, from the pulpit say this also that well, the the, the difference in their offerings was he brought a lamb that was sacrificed. It shed blood, and and uh, that was not true of of Cain's offering. But it was not that, y'all. That I, that that's that that's an inaccurate way of describing it. And and, and and let me tell you why. The best the best way to and I want somebody to find Hebrews eleven four and five right now. And then I want you to read it out loud to us. Hebrews 11, 4 and 5. The best way of interpreting the Bible is the Bible itself. Amen. And let's look, let's listen to what the Hebrew writer said to us about Cain and Abel's offering. Hebrews 11. I, I, whoever reads it, I want, I want you on the mic so that they can hear it. That's, uh, that's, uh, Yes, 11 and 4. And go ahead and read 5, too. Mm. Mm. All right. Y'all, it's about pleasing God. It's not about pleasing yourself. Amen. It's not about pleasing yourself. And, and, and the word says by what? Faith. 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 Amen. Yeah. Now, the first thing I want you to look at when you look at his offering, I want us to think about us. And, and not just this, not just giving money, this, uh, like we're going to do at some point in time. And uh, or whenever you pay your tithes, give your offering, 
whenever. I'm not just talking about that. It's it's everything in in life because, it, but but what you want to do is you want to give of your firstling. I, I told you just a few weeks ago when Brother Quinnon passed away, some of my great respect and what he said uh, to Linda because she'd write the checks for him because he got to the point where he couldn't even write himself, couldn't hardly write his name real well, and she'd write it out. And she one time she started with. O N G and O G and E, and he said, uh, "In my checkbook, <laughs> what is B M B C? <laughs> what is B B C?" And 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 she said, "Bethlehem Baptist Church." And he said, "Well, that's where you always write the check first before you write anything else." Now that's not true of us, is it? Amen. Many of us. The, the first thing, the first thing that I owe is to the Lord. He gave the first. The first fruits, amen, uh, how, how God had blessed him. And so, uh, and, and not only that, he gave the fat as, as well because that was pleasing unto God. What he wanted to do is he wanted to please God, not please himself. What I would submit to you is that Cain came with an offer. And, and I want you to think of it this way. Now, both these brothers at church, I don't think about that because that, that's significant of where we're going, going next. All right. Both these brothers at church and, and uh, the, uh, 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 you know, Cain is upset, uh, which, which, which we'll get to uh, because he felt like his was just outstanding what he had given uh, uh, to the Lord and the Lord rejected it. Uh, and and uh, that's why he, he it was not in faith. It, one thing about us, a lot of people that come to church come as consumers. What's the choir gonna do? What's the preacher gonna do? What's the teacher gonna do? What, what's somebody gonna do for me? Move me. How about you bring something? Bring your tithes and offering into the storehouse. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why don't you come and you praise the Lord? Not, not just a show of hands. See, offering, offering is not just it, it is not just what you give, but but it's also your willingness to submit. A person that that, that puts on a show on Sunday and then lives like they want to Monday through Saturday. And, and they only here for an hour or two, and and they, and they put on a good show. Oh, they sing real good and whatever else, preach real good, but they, they get out and, and live like hell. <laughs> See, God does not look at the outward appearance; He looks where at the heart. Amen. He looks at the heart. It's your your character matters. Are you willing? Do you want to submit to Him? Do it His way. Not, uh, not, not your way. That's what that's what God wants. And so, uh, look how He responds. Look how He responds. Uh, Y'all have have had children or been around children, but it's not just children. It's it's uh, grown folks too. Uh, when they get upset about something, <laughs> yeah. And what does their face look like? Yeah, right, yeah. Don't you imagine that's Cain here in verse six when he says, Wow, I thought wrath. Yeah, yeah. And, and of course, wrath is talking about what? He, God could tell he was what? Not just by looking at his appearance, he knew his heart. He's what? He's mad. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and then he says, And why has thou countenance fallen? Yeah, yeah. Uh, check verse seven out. Ooh, don't miss that. I'm telling you, that, that that's a good word for it. Yeah, and how did he say it, Maureen? If thou does well. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do well. Yeah, yeah. So it's what you do. It's not just what you say. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, Maureen, that's what, that's what it meant by blameless. If people can look at your life and say, hey, you're living the life. You're not just talking about the life. Amen. 
And I'm going to bring accusation against you because why? I'm living it. And that's not only true of somebody that is in the office of a deacon, but it's every Christian. Amen. It's every Christian's duty. Uh, just like it was for Cain. If, if thou do as well, guess what's going to happen? Shall thou not be yeah, God will accept it. In other words, he's an inviting him to do what? Repent. He, to, to repent. Amen. Uh, because, listen, I, uh, you, you got an issue, brother. Yes, sir. Uh, because if thou doest not well, there's somebody sitting at the door. Yeah, yeah. The Lord says here is sin. And, but 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 when it, when he uses he, he the way he puts it though, sitting at the door, lieth at the door, that gives you a, a picture of what? An animal that's waiting to repent. Yeah, we 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 found a we 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 found a little snake in our house this morning. <laughs> And I just, just, honey, honey, you know, <laughs> come here. Little old bitty thing, but like that. <laughs> that don't matter, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And she was just, she just knew it was getting ready to pounce <laughs> on her. And that snake ain't thinking about her. But that's beside the point. Seeing is thinking about you. Amen. And, 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 and think about what, uh, what Peter said in 1 Peter 5 and 8. Yeah. What, what, what Peter said that 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 Satan is like what roaring lion seeking whom he made it. and that's what a lion did you 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 seen him on Discovery Channel they come creeping up there in that in, in, in that tall grass and and they're ready to do what they're ready to pounce and 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 so the Lord is telling him that you need to deal with your sin. Let, let, let me ask you a question. You don't answer it out loud. I just want you to think about it today. Did you come here to church today to deal with your sin? Or you are you are you you want to deal with somebody else's sin? You need to deal with your sin. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Deal deal with your sin. Uh, and uh, uh, because if you do, uh, if you'll deal with, if you allow the spirit to lead you and guide you, he'll he'll lead you away from it. If you try to do things on your own, if you refuse to repent, and what do I mean by repent? I say about that sin what God says about it, not what society says about it. Amen. Not what's popular in the culture. I say about that sin what God says about it, and I'm willing to confess it. Uh, and, and look at what he does right after church. Verse 8, what does he do? Yeah, yeah. But look how he killed him. Look how he killed him. Listen, can't y'all see it? And, 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 and the Bible doesn't say how he killed him. I, I don't know if he just grabbed him like this and started choking him. <laughs> Or like that, or, or or if he had a knife himself and he just came up behind it, because he started doing what first? Hey, come come here, OJ's. <laughs> y'all 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 don't follow me, do you? That song that they sing by they, they trying to stab you in the back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, smiling in your face, coming up talking to you, right? Yeah, and all they want to do is just stab you in the back. Amen. And take you out of there. And that's what happened to his brother Abel. Yeah, yeah. And he, right there in the field. Yeah, yeah. And slew him. That's why we can call that premeditated murder. He had his plan to do that when he walked into the field with his brother Abel. And uh, and then the Lord talks to him. And look how smart Alec he is with the Lord. And he says, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he asked He asked the Lord a question. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, now, what's he doing there? First off, he lying. He knows what he did to his brother. And, and God knows, too. Listen, when, when, don't get mad at the preacher or me right now as a teacher. <laughs> and, and, and something hits you hard. Guess who's talking? Amen. It, it, it's not me. 
if I'm saying what God's word says, amen. And and hey, just 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 go ahead and take it all in and, and deal with it. Ouch, yeah, yeah. You can't say amen as the preacher says, say ouch, amen. And he didn't say ouch, he didn't say amen either. He just he just got he, he just got smart with God. Am I my brother's keeper? Yes, you are. Amen. That, 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 that's for all of us. All of us, we're one another's keepers. Amen. Yeah. And uh, and uh, and God asked him, what have you done? And and go back to verse four in Hebrews 11, not turn to it. But remember, it says his blood did what? His, the blood of. The, the blood of what? The blood of Abel did what? It cried out, cried out unto God, and it cried for justice. Now we're gonna come back uh, to, to that one, yeah. And and God did something to him, Amen. What did He do? He 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 said he he was not going to prosper. In fact. He cursed him. Yeah. Now, Adam and Eve, they had sin. Uh, but but this is the first human that was cursed, that was cursed by God. The other, the other that was cursed, you go back to Genesis 3, was the, was the serpent. But now here, sin is growing bolder and bolder. Don't you see it in our world today? Amen. Man, we we got small kids. Amen. Going going to school with guns, and and gunning down folk. Saints has been over a hundred and sixty this year in the United States of America. Sin is growing bolder and bolder and bolder. It's sad, and and that's what happened in this day. Uh, Adam Adam and Eve started it, but it just gets worse. It it it, it gets worse. Uh, when we get to uh, uh, get to get to Cain uh, and uh, his relationship, I, I, you know, he he's saying, am I my brother's keeper? Guess what happens to him? Because of his sin. Nobody's going to keep him because God does what? Causes him to what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just leaves. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's interesting, to, and we won't get into it today, but to study his life even after he leaves, he never learned from his experience. Some people are more concerned about what they're going through and they're being punished for their sin rather than asking for forgiveness for their sin. Y'all, I just said something there. Make sure that that's not you. Amen. Yeah. It, it, it is good to ask God to forgive and, and, and to sincerely repent. He never repented. He never repented of his sin. He was only angry. And he thought God was being too harsh on him. Amen. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, it gave him plenty of chance. What would have happened if he had dropped before God when, when God asked him uh, where, you know, where his brother was? And said, Lord, forgive me. I, I, I got angry. I, who knows? But that wasn't in his heart. He allowed sin to consume him, saints. That's why we can't do that. Uh, because when we do, uh, the devil is using us. Amen. And, and he's using us to destroy ourselves when we reject what God would say to us. And so what God tried to do uh, with, with this brother, he's trying to protect him. Uh, he, he, he's trying to encourage him to repent. He's trying to encourage him to withstand the evil one, the, the evil, the sin that so easily besets him, as it also says in Hebrews. And that's true of all of us, right? Do y'all have a besetting sin? Well, I do. Amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and, and the, uh, and, and all he could do is get angry. A uh, couple of things, and, and we'll close. Uh, anger, Jesus speaks against, right? Not, ang not, not to get angry, because the Bible teaches us it's all right to get angry. 
but to be angry and what? Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that, that's when you're going too far. Jesus is teaching in, in, uh, uh, on, on the uh, uh, about about anger. Remember the Sermon on the Mount, and he's saying that he, he said in that sermon that if you're angry, you've done what? If you're angry with your brother. Hey, man, what, what now? <laughs> Come on now. Because you've committed murder. Where? Already in your heart. And that's where it began with Cain. He, he became so angry, so wroth. What he wanted was, he was vindictive. He just wanted to punish him. Have y'all ever felt that way? Amen. Uh, and, and he did. He probably felt good for a season, but Man, it left him. And now all of a sudden he's abandoned. Everywhere he goes, the Bible says they put a mark on him. And, and this is a, a scripture that's been abused. Uh, the worst abuse I've ever seen. I, I, I sold Bible reference books in uh, West Virginia, Charleston, West Virginia, right after I graduated from high school. And I I knocked on the door and I, and, well, I bet I spent about two hours and I, I was trying to witness this lady too. <laughs> I was because she was a member of the John Birch Society. I, I, I don't need to tell you much more, right? Y'all know what the John Birch Society is? <laughs> well, it's not much different than the Q plus Klan, although they don't have the violence, but they certainly don't think well of the people I'm looking at in this room and myself when I look at me in the mirror. Why? Because, and, and here, here's the thing that this lady told me from this scripture, from this, just show you how the devil does things, lies. So that mark is your, your dark skin. You are the children of Cain. Yeah, yeah. If y'all if y'all haven't heard that before, you heard it here today. Amen. And, and there, there were people that believed that, that that was the mark that was on us and reason why we turn into slaves and all that other sort of stuff. Outlandish, shouldn't it? Outland and like I said, that, that, that's what the devil will do. That's not the mark that God put on. Because right? I, I, I've heard, uh, we had a preacher here that spoke of Bethlehem. And, 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 they, and they, they said, uh, uh, and, and it really offended me. He said that uh, the reason y'all are white, white, white people are white is because uh, uh, what's his name that was, uh, I can't think of it right now, that would, had, had leprosy and refused to, <laughs> uh, to, to go into the river and be washed, but, but that leprosy would, came from that, and, and that's what, so there's all kind of outlandish things from all different groups, not just white people, but black people too, amen. Uh, that's, not, that's not my main focus. My main focus is he never repented. He he, he wanted to remain this sin. See, he was religious. And you can be religious. Just because you come to church don't make you a child of God. Amen. It don't make you a child of God. Is, has God changed your life? Is there something different about you? If it's not, you may have a Cain religion. That's where you may be like Cain and have that mark. Simply because I come and I teach Sunday school, that, that's not it. It's Monday through Saturday also. And how I want to live for the Lord. If I can just ignore what God's word says, it don't matter. Or, or I, I listen to what the culture says rather than what God's word says. Something's wrong with that, saints. That's not, that's not of God. Finally, let's look at how, uh, what Jesus did for us. Cain's, I, I'm sorry, Abel's blood cried out and it cried out for justice. Let's talk about the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. His blood cried out also. He cried out. And he said, it is finished. I'm going to take upon all their sin, all their sin, Lord. All they have to do is come to me by faith. Amen. If, if they confess with their mouth, if they believe in their hearts that, that God has raised him from the dead, the Bible says, thou shalt be saved. Uh, for whosoever believeth on him shall not perish, uh, right? But, but, but 
that they're going to have everlasting life. Why? Because they believe it on him. They're willing to submit their lives to him. So, hey, Abel, uh, God bless him. He was a wonderful man. But thank God for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and what his blood means to us. Saints, I encourage you, don't have a Cain religion. Amen. Don't have a Cain religion, but have, have, a, have a religion like Abel that is submissive to God and willing to surrender to God and give God your best, not your second best. Some people won't even give him their second best. They say, God, you don't deserve nothing. Amen. They think the, you know, uh, that that's just religious talk. Amen. Make sure that you're giving unto God what belongs to God. Amen. Amen. Let's, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, oh, dear God, your word is so challenging. Always is, Lord. And, and, and Father, uh, I don't want a Cain religion. Help me, as the word says, to examine myself, whether I be in of the faith. And Lord, help me to live a life that is blameless, that gives you glory and honor. Not only me, Lord, but all my brothers and sisters that are listening in and that uh, uh, that are here today at Bethlehem. We give you uh, praise, Heavenly Father, and, and we're going to worship you in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name, amen.
this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard, as it were of a trumpet, talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto an emerald. And around about the throne were four and twenty seas. And upon the seas I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne and around about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. And the first beast was like a lion and the second beast like a calf, and the third beast had a face as a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about them, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 mm. Lord God almighty, yes. which was and is, 
And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever. The, the four and twenty elders fall down before him, that sat on the throne, and worship him, that liveth forever and ever, and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Here we go, say this. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, Thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Give God another hand clap of praise. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for all you've done for me. Yes. One of the ways we thank him is in our offering time. Amen. 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 One of the ways we sing to him is during our offering time. Right. Amen. 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 And as you come around, I want you to pick up your emblems for the Lord's uh now, thank you first. I need to look around there looking at the see. No, okay. Well, we're going to give. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I'm going down there. It's time for an offering. Praise the Lord. It's time for an offering. Praise the Lord. Our giving determines what? Our giving. Amen. We're going to worship God in our giving, and we're going to thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for yeah. the Lord loves a cheerful yes, giver. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Thank you. something a little different. Um, uh, we were going to vote Maury in as uh, as a deacon officially. Right. Yeah. We want to make sure everybody's here to do that. Amen. Amen. So Amen. I want to go ahead and do that right now, if that's All okay. All right. Amen. I'm going to need, uh, well, we know what happened last week, right? Amen. Amen. He sat through his ordination service. He passed the test. Uh, he has been preparing uh, literally for years. Amen. Amen. All right. And uh, so we want to officially go ahead and vote him in as a deacon here. And I'm going to ask Deacon Jones to give us the first motion and have someone second it, and then we'll go ahead and vote. Amen. Pastor Eton, I am proud to uh, recommend our brother, Maury Balzell, as deacon of. Bethlehem Baptist Church. Uh, he has passed the test. He's, he's been studious. He's been faithful. And I thank God for this brother. And I believe that he's going to do a great job for the church. Amen. Can I get a second? I second. <laughs> All, right. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed the same sign. Mm. Amen. Before you, wait, wait, wait. Before you go, before you go. Let me get this right quick. Amen. Amen. We want to go ahead and give to him his ordination certificate. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Up here, and this certificate says it's a certificate of ordination. Yeah. Maury Kirk. I didn't know All right. Kirk. Yeah. Both way. All right. And having been chosen as a person of good report. Filled with the spirit and of wisdom and capable of serving well, was set aside publicly to the office and work of deacons by the Bethlehem Baptist Church at 311 North Dunbar on the sixth day, that's the day he passed, October uh, 2024. And we have Chairman of the Deacons, William 
HB Jones. Anybody know what that HB stands for? Y'all know who that man was? He was the original uh, of the poet, I Am Somebody. The All right. right. <laughs> and Lori, guess what? You am somebody. Amen. Yes, you are. We're going to present that to you, show that to the people. Amen. 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 One last gift from the church. I hope you weren't the one that won this Bible. Uh, but we're giving the Tony Evans uh, uh, study Bible. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Lord. All right. Amen. 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 Take that. We want you to study. And remember, we said you passed the test, and I told you. From now on, it's going to be an open book test. Amen? Yeah, right. Amen. And Amen. we want you to live by the book. And we want you to continue to serve God as you always have. And continue to follow good leaders as you always have. That God may use you in a mighty and awesome way in the life of this church. Amen? Amen. Amen. Give God a hand clap of yeah. praise. Amen and praise the Lord. God bless you, my brother. Amen. Amen. And praise the Lord. Amen and praise the Lord. A few announcements uh, before we get here. We always want to reiterate prayer. God said that my house shall be called a house of prayer. We have to make that uh, our priority. And when I send out the pastor's text, I implore you, please intercede on behalf of those who are on that list because uh, many times they are going through. Their names have not been removed from the list. That means they still are going through. Amen? Uh, so we want... Oh, what happened there? <laughs> <laughs> Who did that? Who did that? <laughs> <laughs> Who did that? <laughs> Who did that? <laughs> Yesterday, this has been a one-sided uh, rivalry. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, to this afternoon, we're going to be at with uh, Eddie and Lady Iris as they celebrate their pastor's anniversary. We're excited to go there. I want you to uh, be involved with the revival that's coming up on the 23rd through the 25th. And uh, But we're going to go ahead and get into this message today about... My new series on pettiness, mm. on pettiness, and uh, I started this series, and my wife asked me, now, why are you, you preaching on pettiness? Why are you preaching? And I said, well, it really came from my own struggle mm. well, yeah. um, of not being able to let little stuff go, yeah. little stuff that don't amount to hill of beans. Yeah, all right. And, and, and it's really petty because God says to, in Colossians 3, 2, set your mind on things above and not on earthly things. Yeah. And many times if we're focusing on that small stuff that don't amount, amount to anything, yeah. um, uh, we are robbing God of his time. Mm -hmm. We're involved in petty arguments said on the screen that pettiness is a tendency of people without large purposes. Mm -hmm. And someone said, warning, God ain't through with me yet. I'm still petty. Mm -hmm. Well, when will God get through with you? You've known him. Uh, when will you be through? And a lot of times we don't allow God into this kind of area of our lives, just like when we talk about God tells us to turn the other cheek, most of us say we ain't got there, and many of us would. 
probably won't, don't ever want to get there. Amen. But it's in the book. Amen. It's in the book. And uh, we've got to obey everything that the word of God says. So we've been looking at some, some things right here in Numbers uh, 11. We looked at the pettiness of the people. What was the pettiness of the people? They complained all the time. They complain so much that they miss the promises of God. God was doing a miraculous thing in the midst of the wilderness, allowing the manna to come down to feed the literally, we believe, millions of people. And they was asking, Lord, what is this? Uh, we were able to eat meat back in Egypt. What do what you mean, back in Egypt when you were slaves? Um, and they were saying that they'd rather be back in Egypt eating meat than to be free. And God thought so much of that manna that we, he included it in the Ark of the Covenant that would go into the holiest of holy. And I always said a bit throughout this series, never overlook God's manna, the small things that he do, does in our lives that goes under unappreciated. We looked last Sunday at a petty praise where uh, old brother Saul got jealous of David in a song that Saul had killed his thousands and David had killed his ten thousands. And he was upset because um, they had attributed to David more than him and David was the only one that would face the lion. As I said last Sunday, it was lucky that he was even in the song in the first place. Because uh, he should have been left out. A petty possession, a petty problem, petty philanthropy. We're going to deal with most of this this month. A petty prayer, a petty pickpocket. Will a man rob God? Oh, yes, he will. He will rob God blind. So we're going to try to grow and get over the pettiness, get over the pettiness. But today we're going to look at a petty problem, and I'll tell you later why I call it a petty problem. Let's look at 1 Kings, uh, will you please stand, chapter 21, verses 2 through 3, 7, 9, and 10. Would you please stand in reverence to the word of God? Stand symbolically saying that I will stand on the word of God. Amen. Let's read this out loud together at the same time on three. One, two, three. Ahab said to Naboth, let me have your vineyard to use for a vegetable garden, since it is close to my palace. In exchange, I will give you a better vineyard, or if you prefer, I will pay you whatever it is worth. But Naboth replied, the Lord forbid that I should give you the inheritance of my ancestors. Jezebel and his wife said, Is this how you act as king over Israel? Get up in the heat, cheer up. I'll give you the tenure of the name, the Jezreel. In those letters she wrote, Proclaim a day of fasting and sent Naboth in a prominent place among the people, but sent two scoundrels opposite him and have them bring charges that he has cursed both God and the king. Then take him out and stone him to death. Hey man, you may be seated in the household of the Lord. We're talking about today a petty problem, a petty problem. I, I need you to help me to preach this this morning. Uh, what's going to be my first point? What's going to be the second point? Vengeance. What's going to be the third point? Vengeance. And we want Christians to know today that Christians uh, uh, really should not steal and kill whatever the people or from the people who give or sell, won't give or sell in a transaction. And this is a very odd thing because how many of us would really kill somebody over something that you want? 
how, how many of us will really do that? We learned in Sunday school what happened. A, a brother killed another brother. Yes. So uh, we have to uh, preach the whole counsel of God. Let's see what this video says. Then we'll get to the word. Good morning, everybody. Today we find ourselves in 1 Kings chapter 21. You might be thinking you're reading some type of a murder novel with greed and, and selfishness involved. But you're reading the Bible. You're reading the Bible about Ahab who wants a piece of property and it won't be sold to him because it's a, it's a part of a family's plot. And he gets very, very upset about this and he cries and stomps and cries like a baby. And his wife comes in and she sets it all up and says, I'll get you that property. And, and she sets a, a murder for hire type of a situation up and sets this man up to have him killed. And Ahab has no questions at all about this, but he gets the land that he wants. And in the end, God is angry about this. He sends the prophet to Ahab and challenges him on this and says, there's going to be great consequences. And you can read all about that. And Ahab after thinking about this, comes to his senses and he repents. And even though he repents, there's something that still remains. And that is there's consequences for his sin. Yes, he has God's forgiveness, but it says that God will deliver the punishment on his son's generation. I want you to think about that today. That yes, there is forgiveness. But before we sin, before we go off and do some things that, that, that are not good and cause harm to others, Understand, yes, we can be forgiven, but there's always consequences to us. Think about that today as you read your story. God bless you. Amen and praise the Lord. A petty problem, a petty problem. I call this a petty problem because this man was a king. And this was not even, the theologians tells us, uh, the palace where he was trying to secure the land, this was not uh, even his only palace. As always, we look on the map, this is Jerusalem, and we're looking going up towards uh, Galilee, and this is where Jezreel is, and they have been uh, archaeologists who have dug up the place where they believe this happened. Um, but Ahab, again, was the king, and uh, they considered this his hideaway place, his vacation home. And, and he's the king, he's rich, and he wants a plot of land uh, that is a part uh, near his palace, and when he couldn't get it, because the man was really standing on the word of God. I'll show you a little later. Um, it says up here we have old Jezebel. Y'all remember Jezebel? Old Sister Jezzy, as I called her. I don't teach much about Sister Jezebel because I, I did in a uh, effective Bible reading class. I, I think I, I, I taught so well about her or about her that uh, the women in the class identified with her, and when we broke up in small groups, guess what they named their group? Yes. <laughs> I said, oh, Lord, that ain't no. <laughs> you don't want to <laughs> do your life off of Jezebel, but Jezebel was a mean motor school. <laughs> Hello, somebody. You heard about bad, bad, leave our bound, the baddest man in the whole town? Guess what? Jezebel was the baddest man in the whole. <laughs> <laughs> so much so, you remember that, oh, when uh, the prophet, the man of God, had faced down almost about uh, 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 a thousand false prophets, with uh, 400 uh, Baal worshipers, and, 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 and he heard that Sister Jesse heard about what happened, and what did he do? He ran. Hell on somebody. This man had just called down fire from heaven. That's how bad she was. Just 
just experienced the power of God. But when, when, when he heard about it, oh, Sister Jamie, oh, he ran and ended up in a cave. And God had to ask him, what you doing here? He was there because old Sister Jamie, he, uh, he knew she was a credible threat. Have you ever been around some people that talk big but won't do nothing? <laughs> Hello, somebody. Oh, Jesse, when she talked, hello, somebody. She walked the walk. Hello, somebody. So much so, people were afraid of her, and this is another example of why this king, King Ahab, wanted just a garden for vegetables. For vegetables? Really? Should a man die over a garden of vegetables? I was studying this. I tried to get this person. I, I asked myself, has there, it, have there ever been anybody that stole something from me? And I had to think real hard, uh, and I, 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 I identified uh, two sets of people who stole from me. And one of them was my family. Was my family. How did it make me feel? I was upset. I was upset. Why did they do what they did? They was under the influence of drugs. Okay? And they sold. Why would the king do what he did? Why would Sister Jezebel do what she did? And the only conclusion I can say is that they were petty. Because Jezebel said, hey, ain't you the king? Everybody's supposed to do what the king said. They were petty. And we know Sister Jezebel was petty. So we find ourselves in the first point, the vineyard predicament. He, he said, uh, the Lord forbid that I should give you the inheritance of my ancestors. This man was really trying to stand on the word of God. Because they were not supposed to sell that land, not even to the king. He was trying to do what God had, had told him to do. They were supposed to keep uh, that inheritance in the land. All he was doing was God's word says. Uh, and we live in a culture where we can be crucified for doing what God's word says. Uh, powerful people we can come against. Uh, all for doing what God's word says. In Numbers chapter 36, 7 says, No inheritance in Israel may be what? Transferred from tribe to tribe. He was standing on the word of God, but because uh, each of the Israelites is the what? Retained the what? Inheritance of the tribe of his fathers. He was standing on the word of God. And be careful when we get petty people in office in about 23 days. We're going to have to go to an election and, and, and we're going to try to make sure that a petty person doesn't get in the office of a president because they'll do petty things. One of the persons who's running was just in California and said, if you don't vote for me, I'm not going to send you. If I get voted in, I'm not going to send you any relief or benefits from the government from all these fires we have out here. Is that the kind of person you want to have in the office of president? Oh, be careful when petty people end up in powerful places uh, because they'll end up uh, abusing their power. They'll end up abusing their authority. Oh, and they'll end up abusing the people of God. Oh, for sending on the word of God. And that's what happened to this man. He was just trying to obey the word of God. He was just trying to do what the word of God says. And we had this petty king married to this petty wife. Oh, and because oh, she couldn't and he couldn't get that way, they came up with a plan to kill the man over some vegetables. All right. Man, isn't that sad? Oh, yeah. some vegetables. Come on now. You king. This ain't even your only palace. This ain't even your only land. But you got in a place.
place of influence and power. And again, when you get people in places of influence and power, if they are petty, they will abuse that power. And we cannot allow folk, not in America. You see, back then, these were kings. Oh, in America, we have a choice. And in 23 days, we have a choice of who we're going to put in the White House. In Jesus' name, please, let's not put somebody in. Oh, who's petty? All right. Ooh-wee. And notice I haven't named any names because I know I could get in trouble. Help <laughs> somebody. <laughs> yeah. Hell, somebody. But he was just trying to do what God's word said. Sometimes you will suffer. Oh, because of doing what God's word says. Yeah. I try to help to grow you up in this life. Christians were born at times to suffer for doing what's right. I'd rather suffer for doing what's right than to live out all wrong in my life. And sometimes in this life, when you live for God, you will suffer for being and doing right. In Jesus' name, yeah. you will suffer for obeying the word of God. Oh, I, you know, I, I always, um, I always had a problem with folk who had problems with women who decided to spend uh, their time to work with their children. And these women who decide to stay at home and raise their children in our culture before COVID, they would suffer. Woo. All right. They would suffer. They were just obeying the word of God. Oh, who's, oh, who's better at raising my children? Oh, than me. Hello, somebody. All right. Who can impact my child? I send them to daycare. Oh, I sent my child to daycare. She was talking. And when she came home, she was mumbling. Because they weren't educated. Hello, somebody. They weren't teaching. They weren't sitting down. They weren't praying. Hello, somebody. In this life, people, men and women of God, sometimes we will suffer because people get in, in, in high places, but they're petty. Oh, and in this text, oh, this man lost his life over vegetables. Mm, my Lord. All right. I use this picture because uh, this could be the palace. This could be all the land. That, that he owned, all the land that he owned, but if this little block here, he wanted. All right, yeah. Petty. Mm-hmm. Petty. Mm-hmm. Vindictiveness. Oh, Sister Jezebel, his wife. Oh, she spoke up. Is this how you act as a king? How was he acting? He threw a, a hissy fit. He threw a hissy fit. God wants leaders to be temperate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Amen. Hell, somebody. That means even kill. Right, right. That means not evenly anger. Yeah. That means not going off with wrath. Hell, somebody in wrath. And that's what we're trying to teach, Brother Maury. Oh, you're going to be in this place of the deaconship. And sometimes folk are going to try to come against you. But you cannot and should not come against them. Hello, right, somebody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. I tell preachers all the time, you leave God's people alone. God ain't called you to fight his people. All right. He ain't even called you to fight the devil's people. Right. Amen. Because he said, bless those who curse you and the pray for those who are who yeah, fighting fight you. Me. He ain't say yeah. lay hands on them. <laughs> you want to lay hands on them in the wrong way. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. God has called us to live a life that is holy. To live a life that is a great example of what men and women should do. Oh, but oh, Sister Jazzy, she, uh, number one, the king threw a hissy fit. Why is the king throwing a hissy fit like a little child? Yeah, right. Who, who does that remind you of, by the way? Mm-hmm. They don't get their way. They throw a hissy fit. January. Oh, the what? <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. All right. Want to overthrow the government because they didn't get, oh, somebody didn't get their way. Mm-hmm. All right. A hissy fit. Wonder, oh, throw it all out. It don't matter. Oh, our history. It don't matter. It's 
just about me. Be careful. Oh, be careful. That's why I was not really in the hurry to ordain many deacons because there are not many folk who really qualify for the office. Mm. Hello, somebody. Mm. And God has called me to build his kingdom, not mine. All right, amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. You know, that's what preachers do. They get in and they, they want to come in and take over the church. And what they do is they'll elect a deacon here, a deacon there, a deacon there, a deacon there. Now they got the numbers, politics. Mm. So when they want to have their way, oh, they say, oh, we're going to vote for it. They're not praying. Hello, somebody. Not see God's face, not fast. Oh, that's what folks do. I wasn't sent here to build my kingdom. I'm sent here to build God's kingdom. Right. Amen. Hell, somebody. Yeah. And I know it's dangerous for people to get in places of influence in the church who do not know him, who are not uh, spiritually immature. Because uh, the devil's going to come against you. Amen. Hell, somebody. No doubt. He's going to come against you. He wants you to fight. You know, people have fought over the color of the carpet and literally have split the church oh, yeah. over the color of the carpet. Right. You say, say it not so, preacher. No, no, it's so because that's what petty people do. Right. They want to get their way. Yeah. This church should be a reflection of my way. Hello, somebody. Yes. Said uh, Frank Sinatra theology. I, I did it my way. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, I'm holding my nose pretty good today. Uh -huh. <laughs> but it's not my way. It's God's way. And sometimes stuff don't go my way. I don't get upset and pack up my offering and leave. You know, that's what people usually do when they get mad. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They stop giving. That's passive aggressive. Mm -hmm. Right. Stop giving. I didn't get in my way. No, I'm going to take myself. I'm going to leave. I'm going to try to destroy the church because I didn't get it. I'm going to try to destroy the government because I didn't get my way. Be careful, people of God. Yes, yes. This is what happened. He threw a fit and his wife sat there and said, how you, what, uh, is this how you act? As king over the land? Is this how you act? She said, get up and eat. Because the man stopped eating. She said, cheer up. Mm. And she ain't saying, we're going to pray about it. No. Yeah, I'll get it. We, we ain't going to fast and pray about it. <laughs> Hello, somebody. What she said? She said, <laughs> you may not know how to be a king, but I know how to be a queen. Yeah, yeah. Hello, somebody. <laughs> I'll get the vineyard for you. Hello, somebody. She was a bad one. Mm -hmm. Guess what? She did get it for us. Yes, she did. Woo. What does this text say? Again, the man was just trying to obey the word of God. The prince must not take any. The prince must not take any of the inheritance of the people by evicting them from their property. He is to provide an inheritance to his sons from his what? Own property. So that none of my people will be what? Displaced. Displaced from his land. He already had in his word, told the people not to sell the land. He told the raw folk, the, uh, the, the, the king and the prince, hey, you're not supposed to take the land, but guess what? Jezebel wasn't concerned about the word of God. Right, that's right. The king wasn't concerned about the word of God. You know him. He went down as one of the most horrible kings oh, yeah. ever to live right. in the land. Amen. They weren't concerned about the word of God. They didn't have nobody. Uh, they didn't have any moral fiber. It seems to me if I put somebody in a place of authority, I want to at least know that they got some kind of moral authority. That, that, that will enable them to treat people right. That's why you can't get another holy man of God up in here because he's going to come up through here. He's going to steal your money. He's going to steal your women. He's going to take everything if he's not living for the Lord. All right. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. 
that's what happened in the text. Just utterly did things their own way. And a man of God died for some, again, for what? Some vegetables. Right, right. Some vegetables. All, all he wanted to do was to make a vegetable car. Mm -hmm. And a man died over that? That's petty. You king. You have, you have all of these resources. Right. Yeah, you know. At least we be too judgmental. Come here, Adam and Eve. You can eat of all these vegetables. Right, yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> you can have every, everything in the garden. Mm -hmm. But this one. Right. Mm -hmm. This one. Ooh, and guess what? That's the one she wanted. Right, oh yeah. You got all these resources, but don't touch this one. But that's the one she wanted. Uh, evidently, pettiness started with them. Hello, somebody. <laughs> and they were petty even before sin entered the land. Because it was that one act that caused it to come through, right? <laughs> don't allow our, our pettiness. To stop the work of the kingdom of God. Don't allow your pettiness to end your marriage. People in marriage can be so petty. People want to have their own way. Some people don't even think they can be wrong. Oh, Lord. Have you ever seen some folk like that? You say, yeah, I raised my hand. I'm like, yeah, because I ain't never wrong. <laughs> <laughs> if you think you ain't never wrong, there is a big problem. Right, amen. And the big problem is you petty. You got to win everything. Hell of somebody. Amen. You got to always be right. Yeah, you petty. You petty! Everything got to go your way! You had a fan set right here, your husband moving right here, and you jumped down the throat! That ain't where that thing go! Woo! I tell you, boy, it'll come around and hit you, buddy. <laughs> And you betting about to end your marriage over oh, all three inches of where the fans are supposed to be. Yeah. Yes, Lord, have mercy. Yeah. Ooh, mm -hmm. Pettiness will destroy your marriage. Mm -hmm. And while you being petty, that woman at the office, oh, I just love how you arrange your desk. <laughs> 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 It on the right side. <laughs> <laughs> well, my wife at home, I put it on the right side at home. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. 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 Say your marriage, honey! Do you want to be married or do you want to be right? <laughs> and somebody would honestly say, ah, I'd just rather be right. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, somebody. I just better be right. Oh, it's just these time cases for me all the time in that area, boy. Because, you know, I'm not just like regular folk. Usually if I say something, there's some truth in it some way. Mm. I just don't talk off the side of my head. If, if it's something. And if I don't know, I won't say it. But I have to learn to even raise up off of that. Mm. You want to be married or you want to be right? Let them make it. Come on now. Yeah. They move the thing. Like, oh, honey, that was a wonderful move. Yeah. <laughs> well, I can feel the fan better right here. I feel the air better. Oh, what a wonderful thing you have done. Yeah. <laughs> we laughing, but they be feeling good over that little thing. <laughs> Ready to run and fight a battle for you, but hey, like that George Jefferson walk. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> moving on up, we moving on up, honey. Oh, how about I move the, the, move the soap? <laughs> Don't y'all know that stuff? <laughs> Pettiness, man. Pettiness. It's not worth it. Was it worth that man's life of vestness? Pettiness is not worth it. We need to get all of this pettiness out of our marriage. Get all this pettiness out of our church and realize the life that we live is really not our own. There are other people. We live in such a selfish generation. They just think life is just about them. Woo, let me say that again. They just think like, they, you know, it started with my space. You think it was my space. No, any space I have is God's space. Ooh. It ain't my Facebook, it's God's Facebook. Woo. Maybe it will teach you how to, how to do some real posts for the Lord to glorify him. You can see some of the pettiness on uh, Facebook. People arguing uh, at people that they don't even know. Tell them somebody. Yeah. Why are you upset because they didn't like your picture? <laughs> Why are you upset because they said your hat was crooked? Yeah. <laughs> what does it really matter? They be bombing on that phone. That boy, all, this, all kind of trivial stuff goes on up there. And some of them are people of God. You want to tell them don't be on it, don't be in any space unless God is in it. Ooh. So selfish. Have you, ever, have you ever seen a married couple go and they having dinner? They they both just looking at their phones. Ooh. Now let me let me. I don't mean to be petty, but let me go ahead and see this. <laughs> if Kamala was sitting with you for lunch. Which would be on your phone? Mm, all right. Taking pictures. Let me take a selfie. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. But I'm gonna exit out the sermon. That's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, keep it real. But nine times out of ten, most of us, if we're not taking a picture or something, they're going to have our undivided attention. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. I, I've seen couples that sit. They don't say nothing to each other. They're just about them, themselves. Oh, what's going on on that phone? That's petty! It's petty, but God wants us to overcome this pettiness. This last point, these I keep us too long. Oh, it's already over. Let me just finish this. This was the vindictiveness. A setup. She said, I'll get the vineyard. I'll get it for you. And, and what she did is she gave... Uh, set them up. She set them up and, and they were set up and, and guess what? They had the man killed. Which fulfilled what the Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 8 uh, uh, about kings. This is why God didn't want them to have kings. They decided they want a king and this is what he said. He says, he will take what the best of your fields and vineyards and olive groves and give them to his servants. They didn't want God to be God. They wanted a man, and God warned them and said, you got to you get a king. He's going to take the best of what you have. Hello, somebody. That's why we vote the way we vote, but we believe in God. Hello, somebody. Because no man or woman can fulfill what God has called them to do as a president or a king unless they are Severely saved. Hello, somebody. And many times when it comes to politics, you're just trying to choose the least of the two evils. Mm -hmm. 
I would love for there to be a pure Christian who stands on the word of God who I can vote for, but many times uh, that's not that kind of person that's headed to the office. They always believe something that's not in the Bible. Hello, somebody. On both sides. Hello, somebody. But it's our job. We can't, we can't expect them to be Christians. It's our job to be Christian. It's our job uh, to not be petty and to pursue the things of God. Perhaps uh, God has called you to be a president. Perhaps God has called you uh, to be a governor. And guess what? Uh, man, uh, guess what? He's not calling you. Oh, for you to be there just for yourself. He's calling you. Oh, to represent him. He ain't put you in office for you just to represent your pettiness or your petty reasoning. You gotta represent everybody when you get elected. You can't say, a man because this thing didn't vote for me. I'm not gonna give them any relief. No, you get in that office, you give everybody relief in Jesus' name. Whether they voted for you or not, you represent everybody. Whether they like you or not, you represent everybody in Jesus' name. That's what God has called us to do. To not be petty. This life is not just about you. God didn't put you in places of influence to be just about you. You're the only one that can speak sense and reasoning in a situation because you love God and you love God's people. And not only that, you love all the people that are made in the image of God. Woo. It's dangerous for a Christian to be petty. It's really dangerous for anybody to be petty. And we got to, we're going to do and be what God called us to do and be as a church. We have to overcome our pettiness. I mentioned last week, if you drive up to the church and somebody in your parking lot, what do you do? You don't come to Maury and say, Maury, somebody's in my parking lot. You better get them to move out of my space right now. Hello, somebody. No, you should have been in your space first. Hello, somebody. You should have been on time. Hello, somebody. You should have been in your chair first. Hello, somebody. Hello. God's going to add to this church, guess what? Some of us are going to be discomforted. Woo! Maybe some folk coming here that you don't like. God may have somebody show up here that did something to you while you was growing up. Hello, somebody. But if this place is meant to be oh, what God called it to be, it has to be a grace place. And a grace place is not stuck in all pettiness. Come as you will. We don't care how you dress. Come on. Jesus didn't have a robe. Jesus didn't have a suit and tie. Come on. Come as you are. Hello, they might mess with some of us. I'm going to tell this story. The preacher called me and he was upset. He was mad. I mean, he just went off. Just went off. What was the problem he went off about? Did somebody steal the money of the church? No. Was somebody sleeping with women at the church? No. He was mad and upset because he saw a preacher in the pulpit that had on a regular shirt, regular pants, and some tennis shoes that probably cost more than his whole suit put together. <laughs> Hello, somebody. I told you in my first church. That was the one that was the biggest giver. She'd show up. 
She didn't have all the fancy clothes and the fancy gear. But them old folk didn't know what she had. It don't cost more than what she, what they had. I'm telling you. She was giving God her best. Woo. God wants to take us places. But he can't take us there if we are dead. Oh, I'm already out of time. Shall we pray? Father God, we thank you. We praise you. We glorify your holy name. We thank you, Father, and ask, Lord, that you create in us a clean heart, O oh Lord, and renew a right spirit within us. Help us, Lord, to overcome this littleness, Lord, to become big in what you have called us to do and say, Father, in Jesus' name, that this can truly be the grace place that anybody who shows up here will feel welcome. That anybody that shows up here will know that when they show up here, they got a place, a spot, and it's any spot they sit. Yes, sir. In Jesus' name, Father. You're about to do some wonderful things here, and we just praise your holy name for what you're about to do. But prepare us that we might not be like the people of Israel who complained over pettiness. Complain over your miracles and missed out in the promise because they were so big. Father God, again, created us a clean heart, O oh Lord, and renew a right spirit within us, Lord, that we might do and become all that the people of God, or all that you want the people of God to be in this church, not only in this church, but in our marriage, at work, Every place we set our feet, Father, in Jesus' name. I know we're out of time, all eyes closed, heads about, but we have to give this invitation. We call this opening the doors of the church, but the doors of the church were open over 2,000 years ago when Christ died on the cross. He died for your sins and my sins. The word of God said that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life you are here today and you feel the call of God in your heart, mind, and soul, we want you to step out of your seat and say, I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. Come forward and we will lead you in the prayer of salvation. Is there one today? Oh, we're willing to wait for you. I know we're out of time, but we're willing to wait for you, Father. Is there one? Is there one? We know in days like these days and times like our times, most likely most of us here are saved, but just in case, slip out of your seat right now. Is there one? Is there one? Hey, man, and praise the Lord, will you please stand? Will you please stand? We are encouraging those that... The Spirit of God leads to join us at uh, 3 o'clock. I believe they're feeding at, uh, I think it's 1 o'clock, 1.30. The Copeland's there in Tatum, Oklahoma. Pilgrim. Shall we pray? Father God, we pray. Did you put your head, your protection around us? Keep us safe from our harm and danger. Until we meet again. And the people of God said. Oh, hey Amen. Say to your neighbor, neighbor, I ain't going to be petty this week. I ain't going to be petty this week. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you for being in the household of the Lord. In Jesus' name, you are dismissed.